All right, so we have been storing stuff in variables for quite a while now, um, and it's fine if we don't have many things. So if I had like three numbers to store, that's not too bad. But what if I told you I needed to store 1,000 numbers? Well, you would not want to make 1,000 variables. That would be terrible. And so what we can use instead is a list. And the way we're going to do this in C++ is we're going to use a new library that's called Vector. Um, if you have seen vectors in science class, that refers to like a speed and a direction. This is a different thing. Um, it has the same word. Um, so we need the library vector, and that is going to make let us make a list. And here's what making a list looks like. It always begins with the word vector. And then inside these brackets, I put the data type I would like to store in the list. So I am restricted to one data type. So I can only store values that have the same data type in my list. Let's say we want to store a series of integers. I put the word int in there. Now I choose an identifier, which has to follow the same naming rules as all our variables always do. Um, let's call this uh, numbers for numbers. Okay, And then in parentheses right here, I list how many numbers I would like to store inside of this list. So let's do um, three, just so we can have an, a small set, set of stuff to demonstrate this with. Okay. When I put um, this three in here, it's basically making, I want you to envision in your mind that I have boxes and each of those boxes is numbered with an address. And I'm gonna space this out a little bit more so it looks like it corresponds to it. So I have a list, um, a set of boxes that are linked together. Each box has an address. Um, the first box has an address of zero, the second of one, the third of two. We call these things indexes. Um, and they're the way we number our elements and how we specify which one we wanna look at. Um, and inside those boxes, are the actual value that's stored in the elements. When I make a vector, unlike when I make a loose integer, remember, um, if I do that, this integer has garbage value in it. When I make a vector, however, num numbers get initialized to zero. So this, as is written right now, would have zeros in each of my boxes. All right. Um, so that's what's in my vector right now. Okay. If I would like to change what's in there, I can do that. So here's my code. Here's what it looks like. To get to a particular box, I write the name of the vector. And then in square brackets now, I specify which index I want. So if I want to aim at this first box in my list, I'll put a zero because that is its, its index value. And then I can set it equal to a value. Okay. And I can keep going down my list. And for each index, I can specify the value to store in it. And I can even make reference to other spots in my vector. So let's say in this third box, so right now I have in here 25, I have 30. Maybe in this last box, I want to put the sum of these two things. I can actually reference the vector and say, take what's in the first box, add it to what's in the second element and put the sum of those inside here. So I save values into my vector elements using the square brackets. I can also access the values that are in them using square brackets. So now inside of this would be a 55. Okay. All right. If I would like to prove that, I would like to show it, I can print out the, the values. So let's show them. So there's one of them. Here's the other. I'm going to erase this because it's going to break my code. Let me run this for you and prove that the numbers are in there. So 25, 30, 55. Now, you will notice um, that I've listed these. I've hand listed them. That's fine if there's three, but what if there's 100? I don't want to do that. So usually when I work with vectors, I can write a for loop that goes from the starting index up to the end of this. And I can ask it for its size. So if I write nums.size, it will count how many elements it has and go up to those and go one at a time. And then I can print out um, the index value. And maybe I want to show like a little dash or something. 
and then I can put what's at that element. So when I run this, here's what's in my vector. At 0, there's a 25. At 1, there's a 30. At 2, there's a 55. Okay. I have to be careful, though, that I don't let it go too far. Like, what if I tried a 10 here? Um, I only have three elements in this vector. So what happens if I try to go past the end? Well, it starts giving me weird stuff. So first it looks like zeros. Then I start getting garbage values. Um, this is dangerous. I am out of range or out of bounds. And that's what we call this error. It's an out of bounds error. It is safest when you work with vectors to ask them for their size. And now you'll notice I keep this index less than the size. The size of this vector is one, two, three elements, right? Here's my size. But notice that my highest index is two. And that's because my numbering starts at zero. So my numbering is zero, one, two. I still have three total elements, but my highest index is not three. And so we can say the highest index is one less than the size, okay? Um, there's another thing I can do. If I don't want to hand assign these values on one line at a time, I can do another way of creating this. I can um, set it equal to some values to begin with. I'm going to change this up a little bit. I want to show that it works with uh, different types. So let's do string and let's make this friends. And I'm going to change the name of this later because printing is still the same. Um, I just need to change the name of my vector. Let's say I want to set this equal to the name of some of my friends. I can specify the size and then like individually assign the things, or I can just all at once say, um, let's just set it equal to this list that I'm putting inside curlies, and you count how many there are and make it big enough. So let me say my friends are Mario, uh, Luigi, and Peach. All right, and so this line will count how many things I have listed, how many values. It will resize this to make it the right size, and it will slide these into the vector in this order. So it'll be Mario, Luigi, Peach. Let me prove to you that it worked. Here we go. At index 0 is Mario, at index 1 is Luigi, at index 2 is Peach. This loop to print out the contents of the vector is really always um, the same loop. It's just that the name of my vector variable changes. It doesn't care what kind of data it's printing. Okay. Um, what if I would like to let the user type in the names? Let's do this. Let's say I have 10 friends and I would like to print them out, but I would also like the user to input them in the first place. So right here we can say, enter a friend and let's grab the friend's name. Well, I am aiming at my vector and I would like each time I type a new friend in, I want to go to the next element in the vector. And so I will say, use this loop. It's going from zero up to and including nine. And each time I input a new friend, it's going to go into a new box. I'm going to grab their name and put it in there. Um, and then I'm going to print it all out at the end. So I'm going to say, this is uh, my friends. We'll print out the list at the end so you can see it. All right, so let's test this. All right, Mario. Luigi, Peach, Toad, Bowser, oh gosh, Shy Guy. This is really testing my, my Mario memory, which is not good. Wario, um, ba -bom. that's probably spelled wrong. It's all right. Uh, I don't know, don't know, some other guy. There we go. All right, so here are my values that I inputted inside my vector. They're all printed out. They have been put in in the order in which I typed them. So it's very easy to let the user input directly to a vector as well.